If you go in truth, oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, 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 miracle walk in prayer. Prayer, prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open up for you. Keep you breaking through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, 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 miracle walk in prayer. Open up for you. Keep you breaking through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing God has for you. Prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Prayer, prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open up for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, 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 miracle walk in prayer. Prayer, prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, prayer. Miracle walking prayer. Prayer, prayer. Miracle walking prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a message. God has for you. Prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Prayer, prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you going through. Oh, if you believe. You will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, miracle walking. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Miracle walking. Prayer, open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive. A blessing God has for you. Prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, if you believe, you will receive a blessing God has for you. Prayer, miracle walk in prayer. <clears throat> Prayer, miracle walk in prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a message. God has for you. Prayer, prayer. Miracle walk in prayer. Open doors for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you believe, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Miracle walking prayer. Prayer, prayer. Miracle walking prayer. Open the for you. Keep you break it through. Oh, if you relieve, you will receive a blessing. God has for you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the Hour of Miracles Radio and Television Ministries of the Jesus Christ Global Mission, reaching you all the way from College Park, Maryland, Archbishop Stephen John Bukuru coming your way with the living word of God. God has laid in my heart to share with you some deep truths of the Bible, new revelations which he has given me to share with you that will really bless your life. Today I'm led to share with you on the topic, prayer, the most powerful force on earth. Some people say love is the most powerful force, yes. But if you look at it, prayer is more powerful. Prayer changes things. Prayer is the most powerful force in the universe. First of all, let us define prayer. What is prayer? Prayer means you are talking to God. Prayer is you communicating with your Creator. God who created you into this world, formed you in your mother's womb, and you were born into this world. That is your Creator, your Maker. Your God is your source, is your healer, your redeemer, is your deliverer, he is your savior. He is the one who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you to be saved. The blood that was shed on Calvary Street over 2,000 years ago for your salvation, healing, and deliverance. That is your God. He cares for you. He knows your need. He knows you better. When the chair is bad, you take it to the carpenter, who knows it more. When the car has a problem, you take it to the mechanic, they understand the car. See, there is a creator who created you. He formed you and created you and breathed into you the breath of life. And that's why you are a living being, a living soul. So God is your father. Jesus said, Our Father who is out in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. See, Jesus opened the Lord's prayer with our Father. God is our Father. He's your Father. And you need to call upon Him. Psalm 50 verse 15, Psalm 50 verse 15, he said, Call upon him in the days of trouble, and he will deliver you. He wants you to call upon him in the days of trouble, in the days of afflictions, in the days when all hope is gone and there is nothing to hold on to. God himself in Psalm 50 verse 15, he said, call upon me and I will deliver you. What a loving God. There are some people you call them, you are just disturbing them. Some people don't need to be called. They don't want to be called. But God himself said, you call me in the days of trouble and I will deliver you. He's ever ready to help you. He's ever ready to minister to your need. And then Jesus made it clearer. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 28 to the end, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is opening his arms for you. It's an open invitation. For you to come, you that labor and a heavy laden, you that is going through stuff, Jesus wants you to come unto him with your burdens and fears and anxieties and issues and troubles. And he will help you and minister to your need. Our problem is we have learned to call 911 we have learned to call the hospital. We have learned to call the police. We have learned to call every other thing except God. That's not good. God wants you to call him first. Call him in the days of trouble. Call upon him in the days of trouble. Call upon him. He will answer you. Call upon Jesus in the days of trouble. 
call upon him, he will answer you. Call upon Jesus in the days of trouble. Call upon him, he will answer you. And all these other things we are calling, often we don't get help there. Some people, they call their dead fathers, they call their dead mothers, they call the gods of their villages and call all kinds of uh, uh, things, you know, in the time of need. But God himself, who has the answer to your problem, he wants you to call him in the days of trouble. He wants you to talk to him, communicate to him, tell him what you're going through. He has the answer to that need. I was lying down in the hospital for three months and uh, I was calling God every evening. I said, God, I'm looking unto you, the author and finisher of my faith. And God answered my prayer and healed me and put me back on my feet. It's a prayer answering God. It's a miracle walking God. It's a healing God, a delivering God, a God that is relevant to our needs ever ready to help is a loving father a caring father today you need to hook up with him in isaiah 38 the book of isaiah chapter 38 from verse 1 to 10 you read the story of king hezekiah the scripture says that king hezekiah was sick unto death until no one could help him even the doctors and the Pharmacies and everything, no one could answer, no one could, could solve his problems. And the Bible says he was sick unto death, King Hezekiah, in Isaiah chapter 38. And God spoke to the prophet Isaiah to go over there and tell him, Hezekiah, set your house in order or you're going to die. So, prophet Isaiah went to King Hezekiah and deliver the message of God. Set your house in order or you are going to face death right now. And when King Hezekiah had this report, we didn't say, scripture didn't say he quarreled with prophet Isaiah, neither did he reject the prophecy because he spelled doom. But he received that prophecy with kindness. And he responded positively. The Bible says he turned to the wall. King Hezekiah turned to the wall and prayed a prayer of repentance. He prayed a prayer of confession. He got right with God and God healed him and added another 15 more years to him. See, prayer changes things. Prayer has changed that ugly situation. In King Hezekiah's life, death was changed to life just by prayer. You see the power of prayer? It changes things. He makes ways where there's no way. He creates water in the desert. He makes a road in the sea. It brings God into it. Prayer brings God into a situation. And when God comes into that situation, there is an answer, there is solution, there is a way where there is no way. Today, you need to discover the power of prayer. In the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16, you see the story of Esther. She got her friends together and they began to pray. And as they were praying, God turned the captivity around. The execution of the Israelites that has been planned by Haman was turned upside down. Instead of the Jews to be killed, it was Haman and his group that was killed. You see, prayer has changed the whole situation. Prayer has saved the whole nation. Not to talk about Daniel. Daniel interceded until God released Israel from Assyrian captivity of 70 years how about Exodus when the Israelites were in slavery for over 400 years? The Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. 
And the Bible says they kept on crying unto God and they kept on praying and looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith, until God heard from heaven and intervened and sent Moses to bring them out of slavery. Today, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Daniel in the Daniel, Daniel in the lion's den. The enemies went to put Daniel in the lion's den and they thought he was going to be destroyed. But guess what? Daniel prayed a prayer and the lions became his friends. Instead, the lions went and ate the enemies of Daniel. Hallelujah. See, prayer changes things. The most powerful force in the universe is the power of prayer. You need to discover this power. A lot of you watch television, spend all your time reading all kind of uh, uh, funny literatures, and you need to spend your time in prayer with God. You need to spend your time in talking with God about your needs and your troubles and your fears and the anxieties and let the almighty god intervene do something new in my life something new in my life something new in your life oh lord do something wonderful in our lives something great in our lives something beautiful in our lives Oh Lord, do something good in our lives, something new in our lives, something wonderful in your life. Oh God, do something great in our lives, something beautiful in your life, something good in our lives. Oh Lord. Yes, God can do something new in your life today if you will call upon him in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and my Father which is in heaven will do it. John 14 verse 12, 13 and 14. John chapter 14 verses 12, 13 and 14. Jesus said, ask the Father in my name and I will do it. The issue is you asking from the Father. In whose name? In the name of Jesus. You ask him because he's your father, he's your creator, he's your maker. He cares for you, he's concerned about you. And he wants to meet that need. He said, I will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. That's why he's asking you to ask, and he has answers to your need and to your troubles and to your fears and to your anxieties. And all the places you have been going since, have you been getting help? You are running from pillar to post, running to prophet A, prophet B, you run to bishop, run to pastors, run to people, run to everybody. Jesus is the way. God said, call upon me in the days of trouble and I, God, will deliver you. It is God who said he will deliver you. No man can deliver you. Nobody can deliver you. People run around and run around and run around. There's no answers. Jesus is the way, the only way to your solution, to, to your miracle is through Christ. In 2 Chronicles 7 14, 2 Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I, God, will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. God himself said it, said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
I, God, will hear their prayers and heal their land. God is very, very willing to hear you. God is very, very ready to heal your land. But have you turned from your wicked ways? Have you repented? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord? Have you surrendered your life to Christ? Proverbs 28, 13. Say that covered his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. When you cover your sins, you don't prosper. When you confess your sins and forsake your sins, then you can have mercy of God upon your life. Today, God is calling you. Jesus is calling you to come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus now. He will save you. He will save you. He will set you free. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus now. He will help you, he will save you, he will save you now. What shall it profit a man shall gain the whole world and suffer the lose of your soul? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Does God really want you to be begging him every minute to do things for you? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek Jesus first, seek God, seek heaven first, seek the Holy Spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Did God know your need? God knows your need. He knows your troubles. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows what you're going through. But Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Have you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Have you seek God? Have you seek Jesus in your life? Have you seek the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? King David said, One thing do I desire from the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. And then he said, I was glad when they say, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse 1, King David said, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. What do we do in the house of the Lord? Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. The house of the Lord is a place of prayer. You go to the house of God to go and eat food? No, you came to pray. You go to the house of God to go and talk and Tell stories, no. You go to the house of God to seek God in prayer. And now even the house of God, you are the house of God. Your home is the house of God. Your room, your parlor, your sitting room, your kitchen, your toilet, your bathroom is the house of God. Because God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is available right now in that living room where you are in that sitting room, in that home, in that family, in that prison, in that hospital, God is a spirit. He is everywhere. And he can meet you at your point of need. That's why when Jesus came, he wasn't calling people, say, come to the church and I will help you. Jesus never said that. Come to the church. No. Come to Jesus. He said, come unto me, you that labor, and a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. Let Jesus hear your heart cry. Let him know your need. Blind Bartimaeus said, Lord, that I might see. And Jesus turned around and healed him right there by the roadside. 
the lepers. Ten lepers saw him by the roadside, and Jesus healed. The woman with the issue of blood, just by the corner of the road, she received a healing. What of the Roman, uh, the centurion, the centurion uh, Roman soldier, he right there in the front of the, by the corner of the road, he was talking with Jesus about the servant who was sick at home, and Jesus healed that servant. So Jesus is available, God is available everywhere. Right now, in that little room, that home, that family, in that car where you are driving, Jesus is there right now. He's not far away. Oh, God is so close to you. He said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't have to travel to go and look for God. Some people are traveling to go and look for God. When God is right there, where you are sitting, right there where you are, where you are. He's a spirit. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Then King David said, where can I go and hide from you? Psalm 139. Can I go to the bottom of the sea and God is not there? Can I go into the sky and God is not there? See, God is everywhere. Right there in that bathroom where you are taking your bath. God is there. In that toilet, in that kitchen where you are cooking, God is there. You can talk to him even right now. You can pray unto him even there. He say, come to church and God will help you. When God is already there helping you at the corner of the road, right there in your room, he say, call upon me in the days of trouble and I will deliver you. Right now, Jesus is calling you to come. And let him come into your heart and save you and heal you and deliver you. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Have you asked? You don't have to ask and miss. Some people ask with all kinds of evil intentions. You are asking and you are not believing. You are not trusting. That's why many people, their prayers are not answered. You don't have to ask with doubt. Doubting Thomas. Thomas said, if I don't see the nail pierced hands of Jesus, I'm not going to believe. Then Jesus said, blessed are those who believe when they haven't seen. You haven't seen it, but you believe. You believe to see. You don't see to believe. Have faith in God. When you are praying, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Mark 11, 23-24. Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. You don't have to pray doubting. You don't have to pray, you know, with fear and uh, you are not sure, you know, you are just unstable. The book of James chapter 1, he said, when you come to God, you must not doubt. If you doubt, you cannot receive anything. You are unstable. Unstable person cannot receive anything. Maybe God can do it. Maybe God cannot do it. You pray believing. You pray hoping. You pray, pray trusting. You pray with confidence. Of course, prayer means trusting God. Prayer means believing that God will do it. Prayer means God help me, I can't help myself. Prayer means depending absolutely on God. And it works. It works on the cross. The thief, there were two thieves by the cross of Jesus Christ, one on the right, the other one on the left. And one of them prayed, he said, Lord, save us, help us, Lord. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Just right there on the cross, someone asks and receives. May you ask today and you will receive from God. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what your problems are. I don't care what your troubles are. I don't care what your fears are. I don't care what you are going through. Beloved, I got good news for you. Jesus said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Whosoever asketh, receive it. Whosoever seeketh, find it. Whosoever knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. And then the same Jesus now said in that same Matthew chapter 7, he said, if you earthly parents know how to give good gifts to your children, how about your heavenly father? You earthly parents, when your children ask for bread, you never give them stones. You earthly parents, when your children ask for fish, you didn't give them a serpent. If you earthly parents know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father? God is very, very willing to meet your need. He said, I will supply all your need according to my own riches in glory. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. Everything in this world belongs to him, the silver and the gold. The richest person on earth is not even as rich as God. The richest person on earth is not even as rich as God. Because the scripture says in Psalm 24, that's why it says, The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Everything belongs to him. By him was everything created. And from him comes salvation, healing, deliverance, blessing, prosperity. He giveth life. He came to give life and life more abundantly. Now, where do you want to go to? You want to ask, ask from human beings who will fail you, human beings who will disappoint you, human beings who don't even want you to have anything from them. The billionaire wants to have more billions, billions of dollars piled up in his bank account. The multi-billionaire, multi-billionaire, they want to just pile up money in their bank accounts. And they want to go around bragging, oh, I got billions of dollars, I got I got millions of dollars. Go and ask him. It's not going to give you one dollar, one penny. It's not going to give you. Is that the person you want to go to? Go to God in prayers. And God will supply your need according to his riches in glory. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. He shall give his angels charge over you. Jehovah Jireh cares for you, for you, for you. Jehovah Jireh cares for you. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. Jehovah Jireh. Your provider, his grace is sufficient for you. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory. He shall give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for you, for you, for you. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. His name is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. In the days of Abraham, Abraham was to do a sacrifice and he got his son Isaac and his servants and they went to on top of Mount Moria, when he got there, Isaac asked a question. Say, Father Abraham, here is the wood for the offering, for the sacrifice. And here is the kerosene, and here is the matches. Isaac asked a question. Father Abraham, where is the ram to be slain? Where is the ram to be slain? And Abraham prophesied. He said, God shall provide. He haven't seen the ram. He haven't. He, he doesn't have it there. It's not there. He's not around. But he he prophesied. He said, "God shall provide," and indeed, God provided. 
That is the God we are serving, Jehovah Jireh. The God that meets you at your point of need, when all hope is gone, where there is no way. That is the God you call upon in the days of trouble. He delivers you from sickness, from disease, from poverty, from hardship, from oppression, from depression, from obsession, from the devils, from the demons, from the witches, from the wizards, from the powers of darkness. He delivers. He's the great deliverer. His name is Jehovah El Shaddai. He, he can meet your need more than you thought he would. Of course, he's the most generous person in the whole universe. He's the one that you need right now. He's the one that will touch you and you'll never be the same again. He's the one that will reach out to you, whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whether you are sick, whether you are depressed, whether you are confused. He's ready to help you even right now. What are those things that hinder prayers? I'm going to talk this very quickly and then we're going to be praying. And I tell you what, God is going to do great things today because we're going to pray some special prayers of healing and deliverance, prayers of miracles, and the power of God is going to be released. Get your families ready, get your friends, everyone around you, begin to call them to tune into this program because God is going to work miracles of healing, deliverance, blessing, and prosperity. He's going to release his power. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He has never changed what he did before. He can do it again right now. He's going to do it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to talk quickly about why some prayers are not answered. A lot of people pray and their prayers are not answered. Number one reason is unrepented lies. See, your life is not straight with God. You have not accepted Christ into your life. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in Jesus. How can he help you? Right now, you can turn your life over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Then you can smile. The rest of your days, when your life is filled with problems, turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Then you can smile. The rest of your days, when your life is filled with troubles, turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Then you can smile the rest of your days. When your life is filled with problems, turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Then you can smile. The rest of your days. We're talking about why some prayers are not answered. You have iniquity in your heart. How will God answer? Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66 verse 18, King David said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Can you imagine? Psalm 66 verse 18. King David made that statement. He said, if I regard unforgiveness, if I regard iniquity, if I regard hatred, malice, unforgiving spirit, hatred, malice, bottled up anger, hatred in your heart, iniquity in your heart, your heart is not clean, it's not clear with God. You see, God will not hear. If you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not hear. And so you lock yourself out. Today, you need to confess and get right with God. You need to clean your heart. You need to let go all those things in the past. You must forgive those who wronged you. You must cleanse your heart, cleanse your spirit. And all things shall work together for good for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Another reason why prayers are not answered. 
people are doubting, they have the spirit of fear. <clears throat> God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of boldness and of power and of his sound mind, whereby we can call Abba Father. God is ever willing, ever ready to help, ever ready to hear you. But have you got the boldness to call upon him? In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, he says, We have a high priest that we can touch with the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus is our high priest that we can touch with the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is our high priest that we can touch with the feelings of our infirmity. I don't care what you are going through right now. You can touch Jesus with the feelings of your infirmity. You can touch the hem of his garment. You can touch him with your prayers. You can touch him with your tears like King Hezekiah. You can touch him with your knees. You can touch him right now. You can touch Jesus with the feelings of your infirmity. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You will find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He is passing by this moment your need to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord. I see goodbye. Reach out and touch the Lord. I see goodbye. You will find it's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by this moment. You need to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord. I see goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord Jesus Christ with your prayers right now. Reach out and touch the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the everlasting Father. Touch him with those burdens of your life. You see, casting all your cares upon Christ for he cared for you. He said, do not be worried for anything but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Say, do not be worried over anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Why worry when you can pray? Why pray when you can worry? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus, he knows thy way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, but trust upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus, he knows thy way. Don't be a doubting Thomas. But trust upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry? When you can pray, why worry when you can pray? Now, why pray when you can worry? You see, the two things don't meet. You either have one of them. If you want to be worried over your problems, then don't pray. But if you want to pray over your problem, then don't worry. Don't worry about it no more. You just cast your cares upon Christ, for he cared for you. You cast your burdens upon Jesus, for he cared for you. You cast all your troubles and your fears and your anxieties and your worries. You just hand them all over to the Lord Jesus Christ, and it sustains you. He sees you through. Yes, wherever you are right now, there is no distance in prayer. We'll be receiving calls and emails from different parts of the world of people who are getting blessed through this program. I want you to receive your own blessing right now. There is no distance in prayer. The centurion said, Master, speak thy word, and my servant shall be healed. And then in Psalm 107, verse 20, 
Say God sent his word, and his word went forth and brought salvation and deliverance to the people. It doesn't matter where you are right now. I want you to bow your head and pray and let Jesus reach out to you. Let him meet your need over there in Africa, over there in India, in China, in Asia, in the Philippines, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, in America. Wherever you are in Russia, hearing this program, God is available to meet your need. You just need to pray and call upon him. He's ready to help you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord Jesus will come into your heart and help you right now and meet your need. He carries your load and burdens and fears and anxieties. He makes a way for you where there is no way. The Lord Jesus save you eternally, rescue you, intervene in your life and bring solution to your need right now in the name of Jesus as you call upon him in the days of trouble. He will deliver you and set you free from every problem in your life. In Jesus' name, receive salvation, healing, deliverance, blessing, and prosperity. Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. Receive Christ today and you have life and life more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Feel free to email us our miracles TV at juno.com our miracles tv at juno.com you can reach us on the phone area code 240-552-5899 240-552-5899 or 202-460-7110 jesus loves you felicia and i will love you and we say god bless you abundantly please follow this message to everyone you know around the world just email it to them, just forward it to them. Let them know that prayer works like magic. Prayer changes things and turns ugly situations around. The most powerful force on earth is the power of prayer. When you discover the power of prayer, Satan and his cohorts, they will never be able to defeat you. In Jesus' name, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We are winners, we are overcomers. Greater is he that is in us than the devil that is the world. Because we have Christ, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. God bless you all for listening. In Jesus' name, receive the blessing of God upon your life and your family. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Miracle working prayer. Open doors for you, keep you going through. Oh, if you receive.